wasn't supposed to happen. We weren't supposed to meet. We lived 1,049 miles away from each other, but yet there we were, standing two feet apart, meeting for the first time. We had one day, one chance, one moment in history when the stars aligned under those Rocky Mountain Alberta skies. Fate brought us to the exact same little church at the exact same time. As soon as our eyes meet, the world around me turns to slow motion. Because within a matter of seconds, I could see years with this man flash before my eyes. I could see us kissing as wild doves fly above our heads. <laughs> I could see us burning the cookies as we dance in the kitchen. I could see myself walking down the aisle towards this stranger. I could even see us naming our first little puppy together. <laughs> Forgive me for having such intimate thoughts at church, but I hurry out of the room, confused as to why I felt the way I did about a stranger, and determined to not let him know any of this in fear of a restraining order. <laughs> but then I turn around because I hear him say, Hey. <laughs> And with that hey came the purchase of international phone plans to text each other well into the night. With that hey came the uncertainty of whenever we'd see each other again. With that hey came tear-stained pillows every time we had to say goodbye. But that hey brought long-awaited embraces. But that hey brought secret Pinterest boards of how we wanted to decorate our future home and wedding details. Most of all, that hey brought me my best friend. We waited 1,842 days for each other, living an old-fashioned handwritten fairy tale until the night he proposed. And when he proposed, I was so excited to tell the world that my best friend wanted to marry me. I wanted to show the world. And do you want to know what they had to say about it? Already? Ooh. Are you sure you want to settle down? Don't you want to like travel first? Well, how do you know he's the one? <laughs> Trust me, you're too young to know what love is. You have your whole life ahead of you. You don't need a man to make you happy, but the one that hurt the most. You have so much potential. Are you sure you just want to throw it all away? For months, this hurt me and started to consume me because every time someone would see my ring, they'd be like, wow, that's beautiful. And then they'd look up and see my face and be like, but how old are you? I spent months picking up the pieces of my heart that nobody understood they were crushing. Sitting here today, you are witnessing the first time I have ever willingly told my love story. And is this because Love is unpopular? Our culture, our movies, and the definition of success proves that love is in fact unpopular. Let's start with culture and examine public displays of affection, or PDA. In Morocco, Argentina, Peru, and Europe, kisses are exchanged between friends and romantic couples publicly show their affection to each other. In North America, however, we allow only the elderly couples to have the occasional peck in public because it's cute, and it's so rare that we take pictures of them and make memes out of it. <laughs> your child will only hold your hand till about age six, or when people start to notice, or they won't have any more friends talking baby talk to babies or puppies results in the owner giving you an awkward smile and a quick nod and a brisk face to get away from you. Couples kissing in high school hallways are name called and showered with eye rolls. We reserve the farthest back row of the movie theater for the couples to sit in so that our personal movie experience isn't ruined by their affection. In today's culture, public displays of affection result in just being told to get a room. 
Love is also unpopular in our conversations. Think about it. The most frequent conversation we have with people consists of, hi, hi, how are you? Good, you? Good. Which, again, is followed by an awkward smile and a quick nod and a brisk pace to get away from them. But love is also unpopular in our compliments. We don't know how to do it anymore. I grew up watching Pride and Prejudice, thinking that, I don't know, maybe someday someone might ever feel so inclined to say, my feelings will not be repressed. <laughs> you must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and I love. I love. I love you. <laughs> but <laughs> that doesn't happen. In reality, if somebody likes you nowadays, then they'll comment, mm, go! You are so heart eye emoji. Can't even. Fire emoji. Fire. Fire. <laughs> but our culture isn't the only proof that love is unpopular. It's in the movies we watch. We grew up watching movies that made us believe love can show us the world. A dream is a wish your heart makes. And don't be shy. You know you want to kiss the girl. We grew up watching movies that made us believe love is the ultimate goal to somebody's story. A happily ever after. For example, in the 1991 original version of Beauty and the Beast, Belle risks her life in the attempt to save the beast from an angry mob who doesn't believe anybody could or should love a beast. The villain song promotes the bad guy, Gaston. Who is the bad guy? Because he tries to force Belle to love him. It used to be the social norm to fight for love, to fight against the odds, and to let love win, resulting in a happily ever after. Now, let's contrast this movie to 2013's Disney movie of the year, Frozen. The villain song is called Love is an Open Door. The villain's song villainizes love. Prince Hans is the villain, oh, spoiler alert, who <laughs> uses the vulnerability of love in attempt to steal the kingdom and betray Princess Anna's heart. The movie naturally resolves that sisterly love is one of the only loves you can trust because men, they're only there to betray you to destroy your kingdom, and eventually take away your power. Instead of fighting an angry mob for love, the princess has to fight the prince in order to get love. We do need to teach our daughters and our daughter's daughters, even our sons and our son's sons, to be someone successful and independent. But can you be someone successful and someone in love? The correct definition of feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of the equality of the sexes. So basically, anybody who treats both men and women with equal respect can be considered a feminist. But somewhere in its definition, we began to think that in order to be an independent woman, or in order to be an independent man, or in order to be successful in life, we need to do it alone. We have sanitized our society from love. Society tells us that love will hurt you. Love isn't like the movies. Love will get you sued. Love will take away everything that you own. Love will chain you down. Love will take away your independence. Love is naive. Love, it's weak. Love is blind. But the thing is, love isn't blind. True love isn't any of this. True love sees your dreams, sees your fears, sees your flaws, your hopes, your victories, your human qualities, and love loves you anyways. To quote Christopher Poindexter, the young adult poet, I would rather be able to say I loved too much than not enough. I'm here to tell you that I understand you. I understand 
you have been hurt. You are a part of a society that is just one big, bleeding, broken heart, desperately trying to pick up the pieces as you defend yourself from the pain that others are going to inflict upon you if you dare to wear your heart on your sleeve. Love has hurt you before. Love has hurt you and you and you before. But the thing is, the human brain is extremely evolved for connection and relationship. You were never supposed to learn to deal with pain and stress alone. Needing emotional safety and support isn't something wrong with you. It's the sign of something deeply right with you. I met my husband when I was 14. And this is us today. I got married when I was 19. Would I say I'm too young for love? No, because I first shook his hand when I was 14. I first held my baby sister in my arms when I was four. I first tasted chocolate cake at the age of two. And I first fell asleep in my mom's arms at the age of one day old. Audrey Hepburn said, the best thing to hold on to in life is each other. Don't you get it? We've been falling in love our whole lives, but somewhere along the way, love hurt you, and love became the bad guy. When it comes to romantic love, yes, I believe you should create a masterpiece of yourself before you decide who you want to paint into the picture. But when the opportunity arises, I hope you have the courage to make love popular again. When the opportunity arises, I hope you have the courage to make love so popular that you go and hug your sibling in public, that you write a letter of appreciation to your teacher, you buy that dog from the shelter, you look up at someone and smile at them in the street, or you go buy yourself some flowers because the most important person you need to love first is yourself. And when the opportunity arises, I hope you have the courage to say, hey, thank you.